Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Political Bazaar. To discuss the trends this afternoon, I have Network 18's consulting editor, Gaurav Chaudhary. Thank you, Gaurav, for coming to Political Bazaar. Early trends Hi, suggest that the results are mirroring. Uh, oh yeah. Early trends are suggesting that the results would be mirroring uh, much of the exit poll prediction. It looks like the Bharatiya Janata Party is coming back to power in Assam. The trends in West Bengal suggest that Mamta Banerjee's Trinamool Congress is beating anti-incumbency. The left government in Kerala is coming back to power. And in Tamil Nadu, the Dravida Munnetra Karagam has dislodged the AIDMK government. Gaurav, uh, are these uh, trends that we are seeing early trends or can we expect this to now lead in later in the day and more or less reflect the final result? Your thoughts on that? I think these are more or less going to reflect the final results. In fact, uh, what, if, you, if you go by the current trends and what's happened over the last one hour, so I think it's going to consolidate in favor more strongly in favor of the one the party that is leading in each of the states. Uh, that okay. can be seen distinctively in, in, in West Bengal as well as in Tamil Nadu where uh, from about uh, mid-130s, DMK has moved on to mid-140s and probably will go a little higher, settle down at a, at a tally a little higher. Uh, likewise, in Assam, I would expect a final tally for the BJP plus to settle around uh, the 80 mark, somewhere between 75 to 80, uh, which is more or slightly less than what they had got last year. But be being an incumbent party, I think uh, they would be more than happy with what they have achieved. Uh, likewise, with the case in Kerala, which uh, you know, it's you'd know more than I would, but this is this is something that uh, this kind of a sweep uh, was uh, something that the Congress would not have expected. This is a more about a story of what's going to consequences for the Congress than what uh, than the left, as much as it is about the left victory in in Kerala. And clearly, in West Bengal, the mandate is very clear, uh, overwhelmingly in favor of the Trinamool Congress. Mamta Banerjee establishes her undisputed status as as, as the state's uh, leader. Uh, uh, BJP, uh, you know, it uh, from a party that had three seats would have gone up to around 80 or slightly closer to 90 in the final tally, as it as it may be. But still, it's far far away from the mission 200 that they had been proclaiming during the course of the very high octane campaign, even even before that. Uh, clearly, BJP may still emerge as, is still emerging as the is going to emerge as the principal opposition party, but it, the gap between the principal opposition party and and Mamata Banerjee led TMC is extremely wide for anyone to feel at this point. Okay, before we go to individual states, uh, I just want to ask you: of the four states that have gone to polls, in three of them, the incumbent has come back to power. Uh, what do you make of this? Is it um, a reflection of the fact that we are in very, very uh, difficult times and people prefer a continuation of government? Would you see that as one of the messages? I would not see though, because the reasons the incumbents have come back to power are very different from each of for each of these states, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and also the at uh, the state where the incumbent has been actually defeated or is going to be defeated. Tamil Nadu is also a very interesting piece of results. Uh, Tamil Nadu uh, AIDMK actually contested was contesting the uh, elections with a tenure. Uh, and incumbency against them. And mm. despite that, the party is going to close in on closer to 100, if not 100, slightly closer to 100, uh, with a vote share of about 35%. Uh, that's, not a bad, uh, that's not a bad performance, given the fact that uh, you know, uh, they have been in power since 2011, and they contested this election with a 10-year 10 10 year anti incumbency against them, as also the fact that this is the first election without Jailalita at the hem. Uh, so, the, so the reasons for uh, you know they not coming back to power are very different from why the incumbents have been voted to power in Assam and Kerala and Bengal. Uh, in the mm. case of Bengal, clearly, uh, what was expected to be a tripolar contest eventually uh, boiled down into a uh, in, into a bipolar contest and between the BJP and the TMC, and the consolidation of votes actually swung in the favor of TMC. Uh, so the, it was a complete, uh, the, the reasons are extremely binary. Now when you, we can go to the uh, micro details of what happened and why this happened uh, once the final numbers are out uh, for each of these constituencies. Uh, but uh, uh, clearly uh, the BGB would have expected, uh, their strategies would have expected that the ISF alliance, uh, the secular front of the Congress oh. and the left, 
uh, would have actually cut into the B, uh, cut into the TMC's vote, and that would have, that would have helped the BJP's vote share and eventually translate into greater seats. That did not play out. Uh, so arithmetically, um, it did not play out in BJP's favor. Whereas in the case of Assam, uh, it was it was a wrong alliance for the Congress that struck an alliance with the AUDF. So you cannot take a stand. Uh, against the CAA, and please, if you if you cut back to December 2019, uh, when the anti-CAA protest protests began in India, it was actually it first first began in the state of Assam, and there was a lot of violence, and it was a very sentimental uh, pro, uh, agitation that continues to linger and fester there. Uh, but and BJP was at the receiving end. Uh, 14 months before the elections were due. Uh, and Congress was actually leading that anti-CA protests along with AUDF, which is essentially AUDF. If you ask anyone in Assam, any voter in Assam, uh, the, you know, the first response or the dominant response that you'll get is that AUDF is seen as representative of the Bangladeshi immigrant community, although the, uh, that okay. may or may not be the case. It's a different matter. That's a matter of theoretical and academic debate. Now, Congress cannot be, so for the Congress to strike an alliance with a party uh, that is seen by uh, um, a vast number of people in Assam as being a representative of the Bangladesh immigrant community and or illegal immigrant community, and also at the same time saying that they are going to repeal the CA once they come in power, actually did not sit well with the voters. Uh, that would have ended up helping the BGP. It was the, uh, but for this alliance, probably the Congress could have done far better than what they are likely to achieve uh, this year uh, in this election. It's back to the drawing. It's going to be back to the drawing board for them because ten years without power uh, in Assam mm. uh, means it, you have to completely, uh, you know, you know, organize the party and overhaul the party organization in the state. Uh, Gaurav, and please remember one thing: there's a bit uh, of history in this Assam <clears throat> election. Gaurav, I'll come back to Assam yeah. uh, in detail. Let me rephrase my earlier question. Uh, how much do you think the past one year effort by state governments to tackle COVID has influenced the vote or the results? Because the state governments, let me take the example of Kerala. Kerala, the government had an extraordinary yeah. advantage where the government was seen every day by people as tackling it. So you have an, so, you know, quote unquote, unfair advantage over the opposition there. Similar is the case with many of the state governments, which have actually proactively come to the rescue of people. So do you think that past one year's performance has played a big role in the results? Is ab absolutely it will because uh, you know it, we are in the middle of a, of a serious public health emergency and and mm. the state governments the state administrators the state political leaders are at the forefront of it. so they turned out to be the faces of dealing with this crisis uh, rightly or wrongly they may have dealt with it in a manner that the uh, people would have uh, you know wanted in a different manner uh, but mm. that said the party in power. Uh, and the leaders of the party in power turned out to be the faces dealing with the crisis. And so they, they, they were visi their, their visibility, uh, this came, uh, gave them an opportunity to become far more visible. They, have, they may have messed it up, according to some people. They may not have messed it up. They would have done whatever, whatever the, you know, the opinion on how they may have handled it. That's a different matter. Uh, but the fact that, that they, it gave them an opportunity to be visible, and that mm. may have played, out, played, played a part in, in, in you know, a swinging uh, some votes for them, at least in negating to some extent the anti-incumbency that may have crept in, particularly in these three states where the incumbents have returned to power. Uh, this is more true of uh, Kerala than any other state because Kerala, as you know, that the health infrastructure and the services in Kerala is comparable to the best in the world. Uh, whereas in some other states, uh, you know, it's not as that good. And Kerala remains a, 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 a symbol of, of, of a benchmark of health infrastructure that the rest of the states need to achieve. Uh, so this probably gave uh, the chief minister as well as other political leaders and ministers, the opportunity uh, to present a more humane face and also demonstrate. Uh, basically, it, it, they, they, they did demonstrate their intent to walk the talk when the crisis hit home. They became more visible, which is not quite the case with the opposition leaders because they were not running the administration. So they could not have been more. They were not the decision makers. So they could not have been. In the case of Assam, for instance, uh, Himanta Biswa Sarma, who is also the health minister, was it was was far more visible than any of the opposition leaders. And he was far mm. more visible because of the fact that he was the health minister, because he was taking decisions, uh, which could not have been the case with the opposition. So that helped. And that, you know, in the in the final analysis, when a voter votes goes out to vote, that always will keep, uh, you know, it, it'll keep ringing in a lingering in the back of your mind, at least we, for the fence leaders who are still undecided. We should also mention here, since you mentioned about the Kerala model, Assam mm. also has done a very good job in tackling the crisis. 
That is right. So Assam and Kerala are more or less, uh, from in, both in terms of population, um, is actually on a, at a similar level, uh, about three and a half crore population for both the states. Uh, and you know, Assam's uh, in, uh, infection rate uh, or, or the infection numbers are slightly lower than Kerala, uh, yes. despite the fact, despite the fact that Assam does not boast of a world-class health infrastructure and service that Kerala does, you know. Uh, so, uh, but despite the fact that Assam has done well, may have gone down well with the, with, with the people. Uh, but that said, uh, these elections in Assam particularly was an election of electoral alliances and as, as, as uh, was more about electoral alliances than about issues. Uh, if CA was an issue, the Congress did uh, the, the first misstep of the Congress was to ally with a party uh, mm. that it should not have because which was seen as representative of, of being a representative of the illegal Bangladeshi immigrants. Uh, so that is why uh, it was more about electoral arithmetic than about administrative capability. There were some mm. welfare measures that the government had announced uh, about in, in the run up to the elections, uh, six, seven, eight months before the elections were announced. That may have also helped. Uh, do you think, uh, let's uh, stick to Assam, do you think uh, the Congress did a good, uh, put up a good fight or did it get it wrong throughout? No, yes, it, the BJP it, it, has no. consolidated its position in Assam, but uh, look at the Congress, just turn the lens on the Congress, what do you think about it? It's so so let's look at the numbers uh, that's come, uh, uh, right until now. Now, if you look at BJP, there are 126 seats. BJP uh, contested 90, had contested 92, the AGP 26, and the Borough Alliance part of the UPPL 12. Oh. BJP will end up, if the current trends hold, will go and end up, uh, could end up winning about close to 65 seats. That's about, yeah. that's a strike rate of, of a phenomenal 71%. Uh, the AGP will win about 13 six if the current trends hold and the UPPL six seats. So 13 out of 26 for the AGP means 50% strike rate, likewise for the UPPL. Uh, Whereas for the Congress, uh, the alliance actually did not work. Uh, the Boro People's Front, which was otherwise until uh, December, until December last year, uh, was with the NDA alliance, the ruling NDA mm. alliance of the state, actually switched over to the Congress, the Mahajot alliance. Yeah. And uh, it was it was ec widely expected, both by the Congress uh, electoral strategists and also many pundits, that the, the BPF area has about 12 seats. So uh, the BPF will, uh, the border uh, territorial, uh, uh, you know, autonomous area has about 12 seats. So those 12 seats will en masse move towards the Congress alliance. That did not translate. That translated into only about, it's, if the trends hold is going to translate into about three or four seats. Uh, that's a very poor strike rate uh, for, an elect, for, for an alliance partner that was expected to actually deliver close to 100% of the seats that it's contested. Uh, likewise, uh, for, for the AUDF and the Congress, the strike rates are less, much less than 50%. And that is where they got it wrong. So it's all about it's all about uh, you know in 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 any alliance we have something called the index of opposition unity. Now, yeah. if if uh, in this case uh, the opposition unit, while there was an opposition unity, it did not translate into closer to one in the sense that the co in seats that the AUDF contested, the Congress votes may not have translated uh, or fully translated into AUDF votes or got transferred into AUDF votes. And in seats where the Congress contested. Uh, uh, many many votes would have actually gone in favor of the opposition because they were in an alliance with the UDF, and that play and that can be seen in the results. Uh, uh, so this is something that the Congress will have to seriously consider because. I'll give you an example of one seat. There's a, there's a seat in Upper Assam, and the BJP in there are 47 seats in Upper Assam. This was the uh, this was the, this was the area that went to polls for the first time uh, in the first phase. Of these 47 seats in 2016, the BJP had won 35. They seems to be retaining all of them, if if not done more better. Now, in among these 47 seats, there's a seat called Nazira. Nazira is in Upper Assam. It is represented by Debabrata Saikia of Congress. Uh, he is the son of late Etesho Saikia, who was in power in Assam for ruled Assam for two as chief minister for two terms. Uh, in, in in the Congress thing in Assam, uh, the uh, is, is essentially about two um, uh, families, and this is their pocket borough. The, the Saikia family's pocket borough is Nazira, and the Gogoi family's pocket borough is a constituency called Titabor. The Titabor constituency mm. is also in a very close contest with the BJP, and here the um, uh, Saikia is trailing. It does tell you that the B, uh, the Congress actually is losing even its core 
pocket borrows, in, in, which was supposedly uh, is would have otherwise believe, would have been believed to be you know cakewalks. So what does okay. it tell you? It tells you that the alliance with this party have actually swung their even their core voters away from them. It's not necessary that they they have swung towards the BJP, but but. But because there is no other alternative, they have won, gone and voted for the BJP. If there was, if, if there was, if if, the, if this alliance would not have happened, I would not have expected Deva Pratasaikya probably be in a losing position as he is now. So um, the AIUDF alliance has cost the Congress dearly. Yes, that's right. And uh, as much, uh, I mean, uh, the, the Congress, uh, the AUDF uh, hasn't lost as much as they would have, as the Congress would have from this alliance. The, the loss is entirely Congress's. It's not the AUDF alliance. The AUDF will probably end up around 13, 14 seats, which is uh, the middling range over the last 15 years that they have got. They have got. Okay. Let's come to West Bengal. The BJP campaigned and it campaigned really hard in West Bengal. Uh, the seats uh, do not reflect the number that it was uh, expecting. So what does this reflect on the BJP in Bengal, especially and the BJP leadership in, to, in its entirety? Because uh, actually the whole national leadership was there campaigning against a regional party. And, if, right. you see the, and if you see the trends, it seems like Trinamool Congress has actually stood ground. It has not budged much. And for a government that is in power for such a long time to actually retain that strike rate is quite commendable. What do you think oh, about it? Oh, absolutely. And they were fighting, they were up against the two term anti incumbency. So this mm. is going to be the third term. And you have to give it to Mamata Banerjee. She was, she has fought a bloody good battle against the entire electoral might of the BJP led by none other than the prime minister and the home minister. So uh, full credit to her and her team. Uh, uh, the, the thing for the BJP is that in terms of absolute numbers, BJP has moved from three seats to about uh, close to about 90 seats or maybe you know somewhere between 80 and 90 seats uh, that's a massive jump seen in itself but that's not the case that's not the number that the bjp expected bjp would have uh, was expecting to form the government here uh, come closer to the one uh, a magical 147 majority mark that is that hasn't happened what, what i mean we can analyze why it is not happened but one of the reasons prima facie is that uh, the last phases of the election actually would have gone against the BJP because uh, the what is happening in the country now, the, the, we are in the middle of a serious public health emergency. The buck mm. stops at, is being seen to be stop, stopping at the central government. Uh, and that is something may have swung some votes against, against the BJP. Uh, that is one, but that is during the last three or four phases. The other mm. thing is that in the, if you look at the Jungle Mahal area, uh, that is where the BJP was expected to, to do very well. And they, the party itself was expecting to do very well. That did not ha happen. So essentially, and also Nandigram, Mamta is now back to leading. Shuvendu was leading for the first three or four rounds, but Mamta is now leading. Uh, clearly shows that BJP's strategy, uh, two, two, three things would have happened here. One, the strategy of not projecting a face may have backfired because people generally uh, would love to vote for a party that sees a clear leadership uh, in place if it were voted mm. to power. That, that hasn't happened. So it, what does it uh, convey? If, uh, it conveys a very kind of a mixed message to voters that the party itself is not sure who is going to lead the party if it comes to power. That is one. Uh, second, uh, Mamta's and uh, you know ele her electoral strategy, Prashant Kishore's strategy to persistently drive home the point that the BJP is an outsider party and Mamda mm. is, is is the daughter of the soil as it were uh, actually worked because BJP if you if you travel towards east of India from from uh, from Bengal upwards of northeast you will always realize that the BJP is seen as a Hindi so-called Hindi speaking North Indian party they have broken the, the they have broken the thing that image in Assam uh, that's that's commendable because of various reasons. Because co uh, one, Congress was in power for 15 years, and and because of the um, existing uh, anti-Bangladeshi immigration issue, which the BJP have been able to successfully politically exploit. But that doesn't that that has not played out in a similar way in the case of Bengal. You cannot go out. You you know if you if you're familiar with Bengal, you cannot go out in Bengal and expect to win an election by campaigning in Hindi. You need to, you need to, you need to have a local, a very, very local fl flavor. Uh, that is something where the BJP missed out. Because what uh, my own understanding is, then I, uh, from observation, is that BJP actually tried to 
supplant the playbook of Bihar and UP in uh, the same temp template of electioneering and electoral strategy in the case of Bengal. That is not going to work because there's a very strong sense of subnationalistic and linguistic cultural identity that the Bengalis are very proud of. And that is something that uh, Mamta Banerjee was clearly able to drive a wedge so far as the vote voters are concerned. The other thing is that the imports from TMC to the BJP, the BJP was expecting all imports from the TMC to the BJP, uh, while they were very high octane and spectacular party joining parties, did not translate into votes and seats. Uh, this is something that they, they, they got, uh, I think, their strategy wrong because, uh, and we have seen in many occasions before in many elections, imports, uh, you know, turncoats as it were, actually do not deliver the same degree of uh, results or the return on investment as they they would have done in their uh, originally parent party. Uh, so that is something that the BJP will have to rethink. They will have to uh, drop their organizational structure again. And somebody from within the party who's seen as a very son of the soil face will have to emerge in BJP uh, within in Bengal for the B party to take a, get a toehold. But at that said, it it's one step closer to power, uh, although that final step might still be a very long one for it to take because it's Established itself as the principal opposition party. Uh, is this uh, especially true in the case of uh, the Adhikaris in Midnapur, where you know they thought BJP could get them and the whole area would actually go to the BJP? That has not happened as of now. That hasn't happened, and so that is that is that is why I'm saying that the import uh, strategy did not work here in terms of translating into votes. So eventually, anyone that anything mm -hmm. that you do, uh, you're, if you're if you're importing candidates or somebody has uh, you know jumped a ship and joined your party, the final objective, the final goal is to get more votes and seats. That hasn't happened, uh, uh, and something that you know uh, the BJP probably will have to rethink. Uh, and also, it's not just about importing uh, candidates from uh, from another party in the state. It is also about importing campaigners. As I said, it has to draw up its organization, build it there, uh, and has to spend more time. Uh, uh, it might take solace in the fact that it has, it'll end up uh, getting 89, 85, 89 seats and also a fair you know, a percentage of votes, uh, which is quite good. Uh, but that's it to form the government. The final step is a very long one. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to, it, it'll require a lot of, lot of hard work. Um, we'll wait for the results uh, to solidify, to actually lead to a final one. And uh, for all the political updates, stay tuned to Money Control. Gaurav, thank you very much for your time on Political Bazaar. And as always, insightful views. Thank you very much. Thanks, Pijan. Thanks. All right.